Welcome to Relevance for Today, a show where you will be encouraged, inspired, and fed through the Word of God. You will find relevant teachings, tips, discussions, interviews, and more for both believers and even non-believers who are considering salvation through Jesus Christ. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey folks, Steve Lewis here. Thanks again for tuning in to another show, Relevance for Today. Hey, appreciate you all checking us out. If it's your first time listening to the show or watching the TV show, then I want to say welcome. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to continue on with the series, Kingdom, Purpose, and Potential. This is part two, so we're going to jump right in, folks. I hope you really got something out of it. And if you have not watched or listened to part one, Make sure you go ahead and go back and do that first, because these are all connected. And once again, in this important series, my goal as always is to uplift, motivate, encourage, and help give you some great starter information. (laughs) Sounds like an infomercial. No, but seriously, the goal is so you can get on the right road, just like Steve Lewis, to find out more about your purpose and what your potential can be as a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, when I said on the right road like Steve Lewis, what I mean is I'm learning from this first before I even put it on the air. When I'm doing my show notes, when I'm studying and preparing, I'm learning these things. And what I love about having my own TV show and having my own podcast show is I get to share what I'm learning. And then, of course, you listen and watch and learn about what I've learned. And then it's your responsibility to take that like the Bereans, right, Dad? And go hit that Bible and learn for yourself. But this is just that starter point. You know what I mean? There's many, uh, there's all kinds of TV shows out there. There's all kinds of podcast shows out there. Some go in one ear, out the other, have nothing to do with the kingdom of God, aren't even about Jesus Christ. We're just talking about regular day stuff. I like to call it brain melting. You know, it's my little joke. But at the end of the day, why not have some important shows about being a follower of Jesus Christ, about learning how to be a follower of Jesus Christ, and to learn about our callings, our potentials, and our purposes, and so forth. So that's the goal, right? And we'll go back, and what I'm going to do in each episode, I'll also go through the definitions once again, just in case this is your your learning this when you hear this over and over again and the definitions about the purpose and the potential you end up learning it repetitiveness really helps sound good so purpose can be defined and once again i got the definition from faithword.org and this is the way they describe it it declares why you exist It captures the heart of why you're on this earth and why Jesus died for you. That's good. It defines your life, not in terms of what you think, but what God thinks. It anchors your life in the character and call of God. That right there, anchoring. You think of a boat. The boat's moving along in whatever direction that is being steered, of course. But what if that boat's going off course like we all have done before we came to Christ? And then all of a sudden, God's anchor comes out, boom, gets stuck in a rock and just stops you dead in your tracks to get you sorted out so you can be put into the right direction. It anchors your life in the character and call of God. It clarifies the non-negotiables. It identifies what never changes about who you are, regardless of circumstances. I love that. And the definition for potential can be defined as what you can do but have not yet accomplished. Reach for the stars. Reach for the sky. Go above the clouds and see what's up there. You know, the potential is it's a cloudy day, but the sun is shining still above the clouds regardless. So the potential of it being a sunny day is there. Once the clouds move out of the way, you're going to have a sunny day. The potential to reach that point. You haven't reached there yet, but I'm going to, I know I have the potential to reach people around the world. And once again, like I said in the last episode, you got two listeners in China. Some people may say, whoop de doo, you got two listeners in China. I'm saying I'm Steve Lewis in my basement 
recording TV shows and podcast shows, and someone in China, two people in China, are downloading my voice podcast. To me, that is what it's all about. That shows there's potential to reach beyond what we could even think or comprehend. Make sense? Good stuff. So Sandra Maria wrote in her blog, Potential is that which has the power or potency that can but has not yet come into existence or into sight. Nice. It's unexposed ability, reserved power, untapped strength, hidden talents, dormant gifts, and so forth. And so these two words are things we all must learn about as followers of Jesus Christ. Knowing our kingdom purpose and kingdom potential will truly change our lives in a mighty way. Sound good? All right. So today I want to share another powerful passage from the Bible to help lay another foundation to encourage you on why you need to know your purpose and potential for the Lord's kingdom. So in this passage, the apostles are faced with a problem, and yet they were able to solve it by calling on others in the body. Okay? Remember that. Listen to this again. The passage I'm about to share with you, the apostles are faced with a problem, and yet they are able to solve it by calling on others. You, me, that one, this one, in the body of Christ to use their gifts. So let's go ahead and open up our Bibles. We're going to go to Acts chapter 6. We're going to be going through verses 1 through 7, and I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. The title in my Bible was saying, Seven Men Chosen to Serve. So here we go. But as the believers rapidly multiplied, there were rumblings of discontent. The Greek-speaking believers complained about the Hebrew-speaking believers, saying that their widows were being discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve called a meeting of all the believers. They said, we apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God, not running a food program. And so brothers select seven men who are well-respected and are full of the spirit and wisdom. We will give them this responsibility. Then we apostles can spend our time in prayer and teaching the word. Everyone liked this idea and they chose the following. Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Philip, Procurus. Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, an earlier convert to the Jewish faith. These seven were presented to the apostles who prayed for them as they laid their hands on them. So God's message continued to spread. The number of believers greatly increased in Jerusalem, and many of the Jewish priests were converted too. That's powerful. So if you just blow through and read that, you're just going to say, okay, yeah, they picked some guys, da-da-da-da, to help with the food program, blah, 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 blah. But we're going to go deeper than that because it's so important that you see all the elements of this passage. I mean, think about it. What a perfect example of the body of Christ coming together and tag-teaming ministry. Some taught the word while others ministered love and compassion to the people in need. I love how this situation was handled. And once again, where it says, we apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God, not running a food program. And so brothers select seven men. So right there, they put it on them to do. So brothers select seven men who are well-respected and are full of the spirit and wisdom. We will give them this responsibility. So first of all, they knew their purpose. The apostles knew they were to teach the word of God to the people. So here they are teaching. They've got scrolls out, of course. You know what I mean? They've got the scrolls. They don't have the Bible. They didn't have the books. But they're teaching about the Word of God. They're teaching about Jesus Christ. They're teaching about everything that they need to teach the new believers so they could go out and be who God called them to be. And then a problem arises. And they didn't just go, oh, well, we better stop doing this and go over there. No. They stepped up to the plate as leaders, and they started delegating some folks to do it, and they used their authority through the power of the Holy Spirit to pick the seven and for the seven to step up and go out. I mean, it's, it's perfect. 
I mean, think about it. Can you imagine if they tried to also run the feeding program? They would have failed for sure. I mean, obviously, because they would have spread themselves too thin, right? Which we've all seen. People have spread themselves too thin in ministry, and things just don't work out right. In fact, ministries end up dying because they've spread themselves too thin, and they're not able to do everything. And so the lesson there is make sure you stay in your lane. Once you find out your gifts, focus on them and not on trying to be everything to everyone. You know why? Because if you don't, you'll face ministry burnout, which is a real thing. When a person doesn't know their purpose, sometimes they either sit back and do nothing or they try to be a super achiever, a superstar, right? They try to be that super achiever and put their hands in everything that moves in the name of ministry. That's why knowing your purpose is so important. Also, please keep in mind, every job is important. They all work together so that the kingdom goals would be taken care of. And this is a great account of what kingdom purpose and teamwork looks like. And as you can see from verse 7, so God's message continued to spread. The number of believers greatly increased in Jerusalem and many of the Jewish priests were converted too. That's powerful. Jewish priests were converted. Many were blessed and came to salvation through the ministering and teaching of all believers. And there's also another important point I want to take notice in verse 3. And so brothers select seven men who are well-respected and are full of the spirit and wisdom. We will give them this responsibility. Now you may look at that and go, yeah, okay, great. But I want you to really notice how they instructed the believers to select not only seven men who were well-respected, but also full of the spirit and wisdom. And you might be thinking, what? They're, they're just handling food. What's the big deal? Why do they have to be respected or why were they full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom to hand out food? It's a food ministry for Pete's sake. You know what I mean? But check it out. As you can see, they also ministered to people as well, not just with food. That is a great account of what kingdom purpose and teamwork looks like once again. And as you can see from verse 8, Stephen a man full of God's grace and power performed amazing miracles and signs among the people. It doesn't say, Stephen, a man full of grace and power, fed people, and that was it. No, it goes deeper. It shows you that even though he was helping with the feeding ministry, he was also being used to minister to the people in other ways. And that's powerful. So as you can see, this important passage teaches us all that God can use us in mighty ways when we know our purpose and step out in faith and serve. Because like I said, the apostles said, hey guys, it's not right for us to sit here and be trying to teach and also try to feed these people. We need seven men to help administer food for this program. And no one said, uh, no, I don't think so. Hey, I'm full of the Holy Spirit and power. I'm not doing no food ministry. I want something better than that. I want to be out in front of the people. I want something big. I want to teach people like you guys. No, it doesn't record anything like that happen. No, they stepped up to the plate as believers and said, hey, let's choose seven. Boom, they went through, they chose the seven. The seven stepped up to the plate, even though they were full of power and the Holy Spirit and wisdom. They got in there and they did that job. They didn't think of themselves as being less than. They stepped up to the plate and did their part. Boom. Kingdom work, right? You see someone's over here doing this. Hey, use your giftings where they're needed. You don't have to be this person standing in front of this place. And I know I'm going to talk about this later on in the series, but... Everybody wants to look for that gift where you're standing out in front of everybody so you can be patted on the back and be noticed. No, listen, the behind the scene worker is so important. You have no idea. You know, it's kind of like when we go to, to church, even though, yes, we know the church is the people, 
But, you know, we go to the worship center on Sunday and we're sitting back and everything's all set up perfectly and the sound is great. The chairs are put in place. Everything's comfortable so we can just waltz right in, sit down and start enjoying the service for that morning. But there's behind the scenes people that we forget about that are setting up chairs, cleaning the floor, making sure everything's put in place so that we can walk in and enjoy the worship. And enjoy the teachings and the preachings and enjoy the fellowship time. And that's what's important. Many hands make light work. Many people who have and know their purpose and their calling and their potential step up to the plate and be who God's called them to be so that things like that can take place and be in order. Make sense? I just wanted to share that. And so once again, remember, never look down on any position. That, that's, that's dear to my heart. Never look down on any position that you might be put in based on your purpose. And always remember there is no I in team. And we've all heard that said many times. There's no I in team. Always keep in mind the door greeter of a worship center can turn a visitor off before they even get in the pews. Right? We'll talk about that more. But think about that, what I just said. Once again, for all you door greeters out there, hey, love you, appreciate you, because some of you don't realize the potential you have and the power you have to turn people away before they even get into the pews. You see what I'm saying? You are important. Door greeting, setting up chairs, cleaning the place, all those different things, cleaning the bathroom, all those different things, you know, whatever it may be, volunteers, whoever you are, you're important right where you're at. And you need to be confident in that. And you need to remember that you're all important in the body of Christ. That's why it's time once again, and I'll be saying this a lot in this series. That's why it's time to learn your kingdom purpose and your potential as followers of Jesus Christ, because we need you. The body of Christ needs you, but more importantly, the world needs you. The lost needs you to be on your game, to have your purpose intact, to know who you are in Christ, and to be all you can be. So stay tuned for the next episode, folks. We'll be starting to dig in to the gifts. Sound good? Let's go ahead and pray. So Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for being able to share this message today. My prayer is that it really encourages my brothers and sisters out there to step up to the plate, to have confidence in who they truly are, to know their potential, but more importantly, to know their purpose so they can step out in that calling, to learn about their purpose, to hone their skills in that purpose, in the gifts that they have in their life, to connect with the right individuals, the right leaders, to help train and equip them to be who you've called them to be. So Lord, I thank you for the purpose you've given me. Thank you for the gifts you've given me so that I'm able to get on here and do what I'm doing because I don't take it lightly. I thank you for all my listeners and watchers out there. Blessings on each and every one of them and their families, all the hurting and suffering and the lost. And I thank you for all these things. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, there you have it, folks. Thanks for turning into another episode. Once again, don't forget, you know what? Check this commercial out for Spiritual Spotlight. Hey folks, Steve Lewis here with Relevance for Today Ministry. I just want to let you folks know about Spiritual Spotlight Podcast, which is a show where I'll be encouraging you in five minutes or less with Bible verses, my personal writings, and more to give you a spiritual boost for your day. The Spiritual Spotlight Podcast will be airing on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, so be sure to subscribe and share with your friends. You won't be disappointed, that's for sure. And please do me a favor and check out the Relevance for Today TV show at www.kingdomcommunity.tv. Many of you know about Relevance for Today, where I encourage you out of the Word of God teachings, trainings, equippings, all that good stuff. Make sure you check that out as well. All you have to do is go over to kingdomcommunity.tv and look up Relevance for Today with Stephen Lewis under the channel section. Or you can listen to them on any podcast app. That's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you name it, you can watch them on there. Just look it up online. You'll find it. I'm really excited about it, and I'm hoping you'll check that out as well. And also, if you do me a favor, if you use Apple Podcasts, 
please do me a favor and rate and review the shows because it helps get our ratings up so that more people will be able to see our podcast. Sound good? With that being said, hey, God bless you guys. Let's get connected. Thanks for tuning in to Spiritual Spotlight Podcast as well as Relevance for Today TV show and the podcast. Hey, God bless you guys. Take care of yourselves. Enjoy your day. Peace. Hey, I hope you check it out, folks. I really enjoy doing Spiritual Spotlight where I encourage you for five minutes or less. Sometimes they're three minutes long. Sometimes they're four. But it gets that seed planted in you for the day. So just as I said before, also remember relevance for today podcast show, or if you're watching the TV show on kingdomcommunity.tv, don't forget to subscribe, share it with friends, family, and even a stranger. Also, if you're listening on Apple podcasts, and even if you're not head over to Apple podcasts for me, look up relevance for today podcast, leave me a rating, leave me some feedback. So I'll know what you think of the show and how I'm doing. Also leave a rating. Because when you leave me a rating, it actually pushes me up in the charts. They've got the 200 chart and so forth. And what that does is people go on there and they go top 200 Christian shows. And they'll look through and find something to listen to. Whereas people like me who are way down on the list, they won't even see me. Unless they hear about me through you folks. So I would love for you to help me in that way. Hey, I love you all. I appreciate you all so much. Thanks for being on the other side of these messages. Otherwise, I'm sitting in the basement talking to the wall. (laughs) Hey, with that being said, love you all. Take care of yourselves. God bless. Peace.